good morning students today we'll be discussing about the poet nisim asikil we'll be talking about the poet and about his career first of all let us begin with indian english writing as you know it began as an as an interesting by product of an eventful encounter which happened in the late 18th century between on one side we have this vigorous and enterprising britain and on the other side in 18th century we had a stagnant and chaotic india and it was during this period we had this introduction to western education so as i said earlier this indian english writing emerged in the 18th and 19th century and initially there were a lot of confusions regarding the location and audience of this writing and gradually it sets its root in india with clear identity so there was this constant debate on appellations there are many appellations given to this body of literature like indo anglian literature indo english literature indian writing in english and indian english literature indo english anglian and indo english these both both these terms were considered inadequate with the passage of time v k gokak in his work english in india its present and future interprets the term indo anglian literature as comprising all those works of indian writers in english and indo english literature as consisting of translations by indian from indian literature in indo english and thereafter indian english literature is the most suitable term to define this body of literature this appellation bears the sense that it is one of the languages in india which is capable of expressing the indian sensibilities and ethos like the other indian languages and sahitya academy also accepted this term indian english literature let us have a brief look at the history of indian english poetry as you know henry louis vivian de rosio is considered the first indian english poet and indian english poetry came to this mature phase with thorudath thorudath was the first indian english poet who extensively used indian myths and legends in her poetry and then we have our own rabindranath tagore whose fame lies in his work in his masterpiece geetanjali which is a collection of songs which were translated from bengali to english and then we have another set of poets rabindra ghosh sarojini naidu so these are the group of poets before independence and talking about post independence poetry indian english poets in the late 1940s started to adopt a uh, something like a post romantic legacy that exchanged a received stylistic collection to local elements the post independence period saw the rise of many indian poets in english with international repute and among them we have dom morris nisim mesikil ak ramanujan r parthasarathy jayanta mahapatra kamala das and they are unique they are different from each other from their outlook experience they were distinct they were all these poets mostly they were influenced by english and american modernist poets like t s eliot and w h auden indian english poets came these poets came from various backgrounds and uh, what made them united is the use of english language keki keki and darwala he was a police officer by profession and then there is gee patel he was a doctor and jayanta mahapatra he was a physics teacher and then this body of work emerged that is a new poetry coming to our poet in particular nisim asikil he occupies 
an important place in post independence indian english literature he has wielded a great influence as a leading poet editor and an occasional playwright he has ma- held many important positions he was for many years a professor of english in bombay university he was editor of many journals including poetry india quest and imprint and he was a notable member of this indian branch of pen that is poets essays novelist club formed in 1920s and as i said earlier his contemporaries were ak ramanujan r parthsarathy shiv k kumar kamala das gauri desh pande adil jaswala etc and among them he occupies a prominent place he was an editorial staff of this illustrated weekly of india and worked there for 2 years and he broadcasted regularly for 10 years on art and literature for the bombay station of all india radio he published several volumes of poems which included a time to change 60 poems the third the unfinished man the exact man and he had also published his plays titled nalini marriage poem the sleepwalkers songs of deprivation and who needs no introduction and he had an unparalleled ability to organize experience into words it is said that no other indian english poet has today shown this ability to organize his own experience into words just like esekiel and the remarkable aspect of his poetry is sincerity and individuality he tries to generalize his own experiences which is neither repetitive no shocking but it is rather simple introspective and analytical and talking about the themes of his poems it included life in the city he talked about life in the city about sexuality about the problems related to marriage and the need to overcome alienation and to create integration among the various aspects of his character so these were the early and continuing themes as you see in the works of nisimesikil there is a distinct personality expressed in the voice themes and style and in his poems life is seen as a quest for wholeness a need there is this need for intellectual and spiritual satisfaction the need for to attain maturity and as i said earlier he expressed the experience of the educated and urbanized and he was not at all obsessed with mythology peasants and national slogans as you see in the works of uh, poets of the pre independence period as you see in the works of sarojini naidu so he becomes the representative of what is known as post colonial poetry he try to reflect the lives and identity of educated indians his poetry was not born out of dogma he doesn't confine himself to a particular type theme or technique in his poetry he had this open mind he changed his subject um, subject matter from time to time and his poetry was essentially marked by a sense of indianness even there is the sense of language and craft the it is said that the real source of creative tension in his poetry is between his pervasive philosophical preoccupation and there is this insistent awareness of the ties stemming from the surrounding meaning we see a perfect blend of philosophy with the current situation with the contemporary situation so 
we see an encounter between philosophy and the contemporary situations in his body of works and he knew that this new poetry which were emerging during this post independence period he understood that this new poetry demanded a new use of language called for the use of everyday speech rhythm in so he called for the use of everyday speech rhythm in poetry he demanded creation of an indian english idiom and it is said that esekil succeeded in creating a new indian english idiom to a great extent he accepted this established linguistic expression but always made his art a medium to express his state of mind he turned these words into a metaphor images or symbols as the situation demands and he was also a poet who believed in the revision of a poem he worked hard on it till it achieves a kind of perfection he believed that in one of his uh, poems he uh, he says i quote a poet is like a woman must labor to be beautiful so he believed in the revision of a poem to make it more beautiful more perfect and his clarity of thought his clinical precision of words and phrases and employment of imagery make his poetry distinctly indian he strived to explore the real meaning of existence and he was the one who brought a sense of discipline self criticism and mastery to indian english poetry he is considered to be the first indian poet to have such a professional attitude and then we see that in his works there is this conscious rejection of all those things known as heroic passionate sentimental cosy he while he was firmly rooted in indian soil and there was this element of originality he was more of a serious poet who his originality lies in his typical poems which are firmly rooted in indian soil and craftsmanship was his important quality he knows that in his his own words the best poets wait for words and handles the language with utmost care and competence so his poetry it is said his poetry is a metaphoric journey into the heart of existence into the root of one's self which embodies both mythic and existential dimensions of life he as the poet of the city as i said in the most common theme in his poems is life in the city so he is a poet of the city that is bombay he is also the poet of the body and he is an endless explorer of the labyrinths of the mind and we see a healthy mean between two extremes he avoided both extremes like one side there was this indo anglian poet who had this bohemian dream on the other side there was the group which were which were immersed in too much of realism but here hesekiel avoided both these extremes he followed a healthy mean between two extremes his early poems we see that there is this quest to attain wholeness to live sanely in a secular world it is 
we see that the characteristics of the poems of his early poems included intelligence dedication seriousness and even self critical awareness and interesting fact is that despite all those modern use of colloquial odds and ends of ready made speech Hesekiel's poetry is not much occupied with the tendencies you see in modernist poetry so Hesekiel's is not a modernist poetry which is concerned with cultural or political crisis in Hesekiel's case the personal is distanced from all these all these concerns which you see in modern poetry he expresses a persona of matured wisdom in his poems and as i said earlier he avoided all those excesses of romanticism while writing about his own self his poems were usually secular prayers episodes of his early life urban landscapes etc we have these works like the third which is more of a poem from a mature poet we see the influence of aids here the stance is that of an observer intellectually discussing personal emotions in a more abstract manner so as i said earlier in all these poems is again establishes a persona of mature wisdom although we you know that when he published his work the third he was only 35 years old and in 1959 he published his next collection of poetry the unfinished man Uh, as indicated by the title it is an explicit recognition of another time of change so this poet is intellectually and morally concerned with living in the modern world and making he was a poet who tried to make poetry out of his own experiences there is this opening up of indian english poetry to reality in its many guises and here indian english poetry owes much to nisimesiki so here i stop my lecture on nisimesiki so this is a brief introduction will provide you some more materials and then in the next class we will be moving to the prescribed form thank you girls have a nice day